what does my walk show? We wrap up our series today on, on growing beyond numbers. And, and really, this is our, our, our final mirror test, I guess, literally looking, looking inside. And, and to me, this, this message really, really spoke to my heart as, as the Lord allowed me to, to, to prepare it. Our walk, our, our, our gait, our stride, it expresses lots of things. Okay, when, we, when we're literally in that stroke, in that motion, we can see joy, we can see confidence, we can see pride, we can see ego, we can see injury, fear, anger, humor. In other words, when we walk into a room, or when we walk into a crowd, or we walk into an interview, or whatever the case, we can say a lot without ever saying a word. Our walk says so much. You know, if you, if you, you know, you can see, you've seen the one strutting, you know, kind of, you know, all, all puffed up. We've seen that. You know, we've seen the one with the injury. You can tell they don't feel well. We can see the downtrodden. We can see everything within that. Today, as so again, we wrap up our series on Growing Beyond Numbers, we've, we've looked deeply over the last several weeks at the personal nature of our spiritual growth. Because it, it, it's so much broader than just a room full of people. While that's beautiful and wonderful, we have to look inside. Because sometimes we see large things that have very little meaning. They can be very shallow. I mean, you know, and, and that's not, again, that's not to be, you know, uh, ugly or mean or anything else. That's just true. We've seen that. We've seen big things that really have no meaning. I mean, it'd be like reading a book, you know, that's got a thousand pages, but it doesn't tell you anything. You know, there, there's no depth there. So we, we, we're looking for what is that? So seeing what maturity really, really looks like, why our witness, both verbal and visible, it absolutely impacts external numerical growth. We talked last week about being equipped for the what work of ministry, right? That was kind of a challenge when we began to look at what that broader spectrum looks like, the work of ministry. So today we wrap up things with this final question. What does my walk, and again, we're specifically looking at me, what does my walk show others? What does that, what happens? What happens in that? Specifically, my walk as I follow Christ. Do other people see that? Is it obvious? Is it clear? We turn to our text for today, and, and, and we're, t- we're looking at Paul's letter here in Ephesians, and, and we hear this guide, this instruction, if you will, this measuring stick that we have to gauge things by. Chapter 4, as it ends, we look, we look there just in the last verse, verse 32 of chapter 4, And it says, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another, just as God also forgave you in Christ. And then we see the beginning of our text for today. Therefore, in other words, because of what I just told you, because of what I just gave you, Paul says, be imitators of God. Think about that. That's a very important word. Be imitators of God as dearly loved children. Our walk, our walk shows not only the importance of that relationship, but the closeness of it. You know, when you, when, when you see people walking together, you can tell whether they're together or not. You know, maybe they're just mere acquaintances. Maybe they don't know each other at all or maybe they're romantically involved, the walk tells a lot about a relationship, right? You know, or, or whether you don't know each other at all, or whether you're mad at one another. We've, we've seen that too, right? And, and so, ladies, don't look at your husbands. Don't do that. But, but, we, but, we, but, we, but we see the beauty of what Paul is saying. He says, be imitators of God as dearly loved children. In other words, others can see if it's real or if it's just an act. It's apparent. It's not, it, it doesn't have to be a phony, but people can tell whether you mean it or whether you don't. And we live in such a world of smoke and mirrors and, and, and all the skepticism and all of this other stuff. Paul here is saying when you walk before others as you represent him, as you are an imitator of Christ, it is important that when we think of imitating, okay, let's, okay maybe terrible examples, so forgive me. But if a person is going to perform on a stage as an imitator of another artist, 
let's just use Elvis, okay? So there's a million Elvis entertainers or imitators, okay, in the world. If they really don't look the part, you know, they don't have the cool suit and the cool hair. And I mean, you know, I can sing the songs, but I can never look like that, right? All right. I, I don't, I've never seen a bald headed Elvis. I don't think, I don't know if that would work. But, but you want them to look like it, right? Paul says here, be imitators of God. What does our walk reflect? Am, am I showing that I am his and he is mine? Is that really pouring forth? Is that really being seen? And then in verse 2 he says, and walk. So we see the specific word here specifically pointing to our visible expression. Walk in what? Love. Not in love like the I'm in love with you kind of in love, but the I love, just like that awesome song they just did, I love because I am loved. Think about that. I love because I am loved. In other words, my life is better. This is real. And I want it to show. I want it to be clear. I'm, I, I'm excited for others to see it. I want others to know the same love that I have been given. We can see that in our walk. We can see that, man, I love Jesus, you know? I mean, we, we can see that, we, and, I, and he loves me. I mean, we, we think back. I mean, he, even, the, even the simplicity, uh, even in that last song, which was great, but even back to the simplicity of the Bible school version that we all learned when we were kids. Yes, Jesus loves me. I mean, we, we, we think about that, you know, because he told me so. We believe that. We talk, we've talked about that childlike faith. So Paul here says, walk in love as Christ also loved us. What does that mean? He set the example. He, he showed us first. And just like uh, what, uh, Scott was saying, you know, he, when we were at our worth, I mean, worst ever, unlovable, if you will, he still died for me. How incredible is that? Paul here says, walk in that. Let everybody see that in you. Be imitators of God. Walk in love. It says, Christ also loved us. He said the example. He gave himself for us, not just words. Jesus didn't just say, I love you. Jesus showed us that he loved us. How powerful is that? And it goes on, it says, a sacrificial. What does that word mean? He didn't have to. He didn't have to. And then, I love this part, and this is what I talked about in the introduction, and a fragrant offering to God. Back in the Old Testament, it said that a proper sacrifice created a pleasing aroma to God. That it, it, was, it, it pleased the nostrils of God. So, what does something that smells, what does it, when it smells good, what does it do? It draws, right? If, if it's a good thing baking out of the, out of the kitchen or, 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 you know, you walk into a bakery, you walk into a fine restaurant, it, it just it permeates the air, right? But, but also we have things like flowers. They smell good. They're fragrant. A, a nice perfume or cologne. It, it creates a desire to get closer. I want to know what that is. I, I, want to, I don't even mind if it's on me. You know, I, I, I love that. I, you, you, you want to have that closeness. Does our walk with Christ, does it create that? Think about it. Does our walk with Christ create a fragrant offering to God? In other words, does it smell good or does it stink? That's kind of, the, there's no gray area. Which one does it? Which one do I offer? Do I offer something like, man, I really want that? Or, no, nah, that's okay, I'll pass. You know, we, 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 that's where we are here. And so our walk, our walk absolutely gives the answer to that question. People know whether it creates something good or whether, no, I'll, I'll take a hard pass on that. Our walk says what is real and what is not. It becomes a clear picture. And, and when we think about, again, we think about that, we are always in front of people, always, whether it's at work or whether it's at home, whether it's at school, or whether it's at church, whether it's walking down the street, doesn't matter. We're always there. Our walk can show confidence or it can show arrogance. They can, they're, they're, there's, there's two different things there. Our walk can, can, can say, I'm sure. I really have this figured out, which is confidence. Arrogance says, well, I'm not sure, but my pride refuses to acknowledge that. So I'm going to have my nose stuck up and I'm just, I'm not going to listen to nothing. So there's two different things. One's, one, is, one is conformable, one is not. 
And we see that happening all the time. We look at verse 6 and 7. And so we continue, and, and, and Paul writes, he said, Let no one deceive you with empty arguments. That's important. Deceive means to mislead. Who's, who's the number one person of that? The enemy himself, right? I don't want you to know the truth. I want to give you every falsehood possible. I want to send you down every direction but the right one. And Paul here says, be careful. Be careful to let no one deceive you with empty arguments. Our walk shows the strength of our relationship, which shows whether we know him or just know about him. Because there's two different things there, friends. I mean, if when we know the Lord, in other words, when we know the heart of the Father, we know what he would or wouldn't say. Just like when we get to know each other personally, intimately, and someone comes to you and says, well, so-and-so said this, you'd be like, I don't believe that because that's not who they are. Uh, or either they were having a really, really bad day, you know, but, but I mean, that, that's just, that is not who they are. Their character, their walk does not show that. Here Paul is saying, be very, very careful. Let no one deceive you with empty arguments. In other words, when we hear, and, so, and, and I've heard this, you know, a thousand times over the years, and, and maybe many of you has, when we hear in the midst of a conversation, or we hear in the midst of a argument or whatever the case, oh, well, the Bible says... We know whether it does or whether it doesn't because we know the heart of the Father. We know that's not there or that's not what that means. We, we hear that and we hear all these different things all the time. Again, I'm not talking about mere memorization, but rather we know the heart of the Father. So if we hear deception, if we hear lies or the schemes of the enemy, then we can say, yeah, that's not going to work because that's not true. That's not what God said. That's not what he's saying to my heart. That's not what he's showing me through my walk with him because I am an imitator of God. I am walking in the love of Christ. I get it. This makes sense to me. Again, that's not arrogance. That's confidence. That is, I know that I know that I know. In other words, nothing can take this away from me. And you can come and twist it and skew it all you want. I know you're a liar and I'm not listening. That's important that we can find that place in our walk, friends. Deceive with empty arguments. In other words, stuff that accomplishes nothing. We see it happen all the time. Even within the realm of the church, sadly, sometimes there's major conferences and meetings and all kinds of stuff. Some of them have been held recently that are filled with this kind of nonsense. In other words, they draw no one closer to Christ. And if the objective of everything that we do if we're, every time we're gathering here, whether we have something special, whether we sing a song, whatever, it doesn't matter what we do, whether it's something on the radio that we're doing, if everything that we do is not pointing someone closer to Christ, then it's not really accomplishing our goal. Okay, we're not, we're not fulfilling what God has asked us to do. And so we see here that if it's not drawing one close to Christ, oftentimes it only ends up hurting the cause of Christ. In other words, the walk that is then seen is not beneficial think about that. It didn't help me at all. I didn't learn anything from that. I didn't grow in that in any way. It didn't improve my stature. It didn't help me figure out anything any better. But many, but many are deceived in today's time. And many are drawn into such things because it seems right. Well, if we go back to creation, we go back to the original fall, what does it say? And, and this is very specific what does this say that caused the initial issue? It was pleasing to the eye. In other words, it looks good. How could it be wrong? It sounds good. How could it be wrong? But if you don't know where it came from, if you don't know the source of it, anything can sound good. Anything can sound right. But when we're walking with him, when we're being imitators of God and listening and understanding the heart of the Father, it changes what we listen to and what we don't listen to. It changes our whole entire perspective about how we go forward. And so if we're mindful of the truth and we're mindful of the impact that this stuff has on our walk before others, we see, we see whether it's the way that we want to go or not. We begin to understand it in a much, much deeper way. We see that our call is not reflected in times that are being wasted. We see that our call is not being reflected in those things that are deceptive. Verse 7 says, therefore, because of this, okay, we look, we look here, it says, let no one deceive you with empty arguments for God's wrath is coming on the disobedient because of these things. Therefore, therefore, do not become 
partners. Do not become partakers. It doesn't say, well, just for a little bit. It doesn't say that. Paul says, leave that alone. Don't be a part of that. Why? Because in verse 8 it says, you were once darkness. Very important that we understand that. Okay, just like, just like was mentioned from Romans that you were once sinners. When you were sinners. Here Paul says, when you were once darkness, past tense. We talked about that last week. Old things have passed away. You were once in darkness. Now you're not there. That is no longer where you live. That has now changed. But now you are what? Light in the Lord. What is that? New creation. Old things have passed away. Now the new creation has taken its place. And he says, live as children of light. So the old things are gone. Now you're living new. How are we to live that? As children of light. Live as, simply put, let it shine. Let it shine. You know, we, again, we talked about the, the simplistic, you know, beautiful little songs that we maybe learned when we were little. You know, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. I mean, it comes from a great old spiritual that came from a long time ago. And it, you know, he says, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And we can go in through all the motions and everybody can put their finger up and make sure it's the right one. But no, but, but, we, but we think about, think about, the, there we go. <laughs> but, but we think about the, that's what Paul is saying. Does your light, does your walk, does it shine? Does everybody see that this is real in your life? Because our walk shows others that our connection, our connection with the Lord is bright and warm and inviting. Or it shows the bulb needs replacing. Okay? Because that's what it shows. It's very, very clear. It's like walking around with a lamp all day long and don't have it plugged in. It don't show much light, right? Where are we at? Where are we at? Do people see that light or do they not see it? Verse 9, it tells us, for fruit of the light. In other words, this is what the light we are called to walk in shows. Fruit is what is bared. Fruit is what is seen on the vine, on the branches. We can see the apple, the orange. Is what, that is what is seen on that that is given to bear that, right? We are called to be It says here, have fruit of the light. That is what is called to be produced. It says it consists of how much goodness? All goodness, righteousness, and truth. In other words, what we clearly see, clearly see rather quickly is when those things are there or not. It's very, very clear. You know, it's very, very clear whether there is a light Or there is no light. It is absolutely present or it's absolutely not. We can see. And if these components are missing, goodness, righteousness, truth, if they're missing, hmm, then the light's not shining very good. But if we do as we're told here and we walk in love, we walk as light, we walk with him, we walk in goodness, righteousness, and truth, they're easily seen if they exist. They're there. It's not a question. Your walk shows that. It it absolutely gives the ability to this there. So how do we see? How do we how do we know? We need to be fruit inspectors. Okay? That's where we gotta be. That's what that's what this is all about. Verse 10. And very, very clearly says this: testing what is pleasing to who? The Lord. Now, when we buy produce, aren't you going to your, your market, wherever you go, Walmart, you know, uh, Publix, whoever you go to, it doesn't matter, Harris Teeter, you buy Publix, okay, you buy, you buy the produce, what do you do? You examine it, you look at it, and you're thumping the watermelon, and you're, you know, feeling this, and testing that stuff, you know, I, I'm, when I buy apples, I always look for the soft spot, I don't like that, all right, that's just my thing, I want it to be, I want it to be firm. We check it. We look for the bad spots, the rotten places, whether it's too ripe, whether it's not ripe enough, whether it's got a bug on it or a worm. Shouldn't we inspect our own fruit too? We should know whether something good is there or not. And we've got the list. I mean, we know as we go back to Galatians, Paul writes that the fruit of the Spirit is love, Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. Is that there? We need to, we need to be fruit inspectors. We need to check it out. And not, not for your neighbor, for you. Okay? Everybody's orchard is not producing at the same time. Okay? Everybody's in their own walk getting there. Because before I can be concerned about what you're doing, i got to look at this guy. 
That's why scripture says before you find the plank in the other person or the speck in the other person's eye, look at the, you know, look at the boulder in yours. You know, I mean, that, that, that's a problem, right? And, and, but we, we do that oppositely. And well, I can see what all they're doing. But we need to look in the mirror. And here when we're checking out our walk, and again, not in the checking out of, hey, look at me, but hey, I need to look at me. Uh, that, that's important. And we see here Paul is saying, test it. Test it and see what pleases the Lord. If our walk is filled with goodness, if our walk is filled with righteousness, and, and, not, not, and again, we're not talking about pious and snooty, but it's clear that I'm trying to live for God. That's what our walk should show. Not I'm better than you, or I finally made it, or you know, I'm a member over at so-and-so, or, or none of that. That doesn't show Jesus. He sat down, it tells us clearly that he sat down with the ones that nobody else would talk to. And the religious leaders got mad at him for that. Why do you sit with them? He said, because that's who I came to find. I came to seek and to save the lost. Aren't we glad that that's who he was looking for today? Because I was in that group. I'm glad when he found me. You know, I'm, I, and, and we see here, does our walk reflect that we walk in that love that he has loved us, that he has given us, that he has shown us? Because it can be seen whether it is there. Again, walk in righteousness, walk in truth, no fake news. It's got to be real. It's got to be true. Just the good news of Christ. Can others see that in our walk? Because it matters. Visible matters. How much stuff do we gauge today by visible? Pretty much everything, right? Does it look good? Does it seem right? Does it seem stable? Does it seem honest? I mean, every, everything kind of is, is by the visible. But how sometimes can visible be deceiving? Sometimes it looks good, but it's not. Sometimes it's bright and shiny, but it might bite you. Sometimes it's bright and shiny, it might hurt you. It might be poison. It could be all kinds of different things that we could look at. A smile, we need to know what's behind that smile. You know, is it joy or is it, you know, devious? It could be lots of different things, right? We need to know. Visible matters because others are impacted by the example set by those who claim something, especially in faith matters. I mean, we're seeing, and again, we're not going to get into the, into the weeds with that, but we see, you know, big falls from big places in recent times, okay? We need to know. We need to know. What matters and the visible, what the examples are being set by those before us. It matters, friends. And when we think about that from our daily walk, the visible examples we set before our coworkers, the visible example we set before our children or our fellow friends, or it matters. We can't have two different characters. We can't be all reverent and ready to go in here and go out there and be somebody different. What we reflect here together should be reflective everywhere. And as we do this and walk before our families and, and our children, especially if they're younger, and even if they're getting older, that matters. How do we handle this? How do we do this? How do we walk into this? Because life is tough these days. I can't imagine being young again. You know, I think about that sometimes. The stuff that kids are looking at and dealing with today didn't exist when we were young. And if it did, nobody knew about it. You know, that's not to say that it was perfect when we were, you know, back in the day it was so much better. That's not always true. You know, I remember, you know, having to roll the window down and we had, uh, my dad said we had 260 air conditioning, both windows down to 60 miles an hour. I like the cool in the car now, you know, so that's better. <laughs> you know, there, there, there is, there is some, adv that's some advanta advant advantage of being here now. But, but when we think about, we think about what God is calling us to do, the representation, we go back to that first verse, be imitators of who? Of God. What am I showing? Am I showing that in my walk? Is it seen clearly in my walk? Visible matters. Verse 15. And so he says, pay careful attention then to how you walk. One version says how you live. And it's not wrong either way. Not as unwise people, but as wise. That is so important. Pay attention to how you walk walk. What do other people see? Not as unwise. In other words, those that don't know better, as Jesus would say, the unwise, I count you as foolish, is one that builds their house on what? The sand, because it can't last. It has no foundation. There's nothing there. And then we see, but rather walk as one that is wise, ones that listens to his instructions. 
What is God showing us? Because if we're going to imitate him, we have to first know what he's doing. So I got to know who he is, right? That makes sense, right? I I can't come up and be a so-and-so imitator of whoever, doesn't matter. And I don't know any of their songs. I don't know any of their moves. I don't know any of their actions. You look kind of silly, right? It should be obvious. Again, we use the illustration. Maybe it's maybe it's right or wrong. I don't know. But you know, you think I have a good friend of mine named Eddie Miles. How many were people that were phenomenal performers? And when you walked on, when, not, when they walked on stage, not only did you realize who they were trying to emulate, the minute they opened their mouth, they did their best to not just replicate that song or that voice, but to provide you the image of what it was you came to see right? You knew who they were trying to be. And that was a visible and an audible thing. You could tell they really worked on their act. They knew. Well, Paul here is saying, imitate God. We're not talking about performing miracles or walking out and parting the sin. We're not talking about about character, that fruit of the spirit, that love and joy and kindness and peace and and patience and all those things. He's saying, show that to everybody else. Let them see I am real. Because oftentimes, and we've said it before, I've certainly said it before, oftentimes in this life, the only Jesus anybody's going to ever see is you until they get to glory. And that is so important. Are they going to see him? Is it going to be a fragrant offering to God? Is it going to be a pleasing thing to God? Or is it going to be, I don't know who you are because you're not acting like me. Unbelievable how, how awesome this really is. Paul here saying, in other words, pay attention, not only in the manner in which we walk, but being mindful of how we represent him. So indeed, visible matters. And that includes our use of time. Now, we, we, again, we fill our time with all kinds of stuff, okay? And so this is not a right or wrong or condemnation. But we fill our time with fun, with recreation, with work, with family, with exercise. All of these fill our days But Paul says here in verse 16, make the most of time. Make the most of time. Why? Because he says the days are evil. Now, what does that have to do with our walk? What what does that what does that do? Well, evil, what we need to understand is what the, the content of what he's trying to say here. Evil recruits. Evil, evil tries to seek more and more ways to distract. So in other words, if I'm being mindful of my walk and where I'm going, I can't be doing this. I got to keep going, right? Jesus said, follow who? Follow me. Very singular directive. But evil is saying, Psst, hey, how about over here? Let's go this way for a little while. Let's go that way for a little while. And it's a very tempting thing because it's pleasing to the eye, oftentimes. Oh, that, that looks like fun. And we're not saying that other things can't be fun. And we're not saying that just walking with Jesus is dull and boring. And, and No, 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 no. It's the most wonderful thing there is because then we see the truth and we see what it is. But evil seeks to distract and more ways to keep people from the truth. Because why? The truth is the only thing that does what? Sets us free. See, if the enemy can keep me in bondage, if the enemy can keep me over here in the dark where I can't see the light, I can't find my way out. Kind of a scary place, right? So here, Paul is saying, be mindful of how you spend your time because the days are evil. Evil wants to keep us away from the truth. Time is a gift. Every breath is a gift from God. How we use it, how we honor him with it, because scripture says that all things that we do, do for what? The glory of God. It says even in how you eat and how you drink, all these different things, because there were festivals at that time that were very ungodly. It was a, it was a debaucherous kind of a thing. He said everything that you do, because why? Because it has an eternal impact. People are watching. People are watching. And as you've heard me say before, the only thing better than going to heaven is taking somebody with you, right? And if that's true, what example am I giving for them to follow? Because if I'm not being an imitator of God, if I'm not walking in love, if I'm not showing that, you might not want to go with me. I've heard that before. If they're going to heaven, I don't want to. That's kind of a sad thing. You know, that's a really sad thing. This should be the most joyous thing that we can give. The most joyous gift that we can give anybody is the gift of the truth to set their hearts and their lives free. We are surrounded, as I said earlier, by people all the time, whether it's work, whether it's school, family shopping. Our walk gets seen whether we know so or not. Sometimes we don't think about that. 
Sometimes we don't think about that. I seen a lady one time, this has been a few several years ago. I was about two people back from her. She's in the checkout line at the grocery store, right? And she threw the biggest fit of any adult I have ever seen in my entire life. And it was, it was comical, but it was embarrassing, obviously, at the same time for her. But she had the biggest hissy fit. Uh, and, and, and I said, why would that matter? Well, there was a couple of reasons. Number one, she was a member of my church. And number two, I had just baptized her the week before. <laughs> so, so, she, 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 so she, she was pretty fresh in her walk, right? She wasn't there yet. So she, we're, I, I gave her a little ride. But what, what was comical, what was funny is, I mean, she had, I mean, a meltdown fit because something didn't go her way at the cash register. And I mean, I mean cursed and threw the buggy and did, I mean, had, a, had a fit. And then she turned around and saw me standing there. <laughs> she ran out of the door, you know, all, all embarrassed. But anyhow, we had to talk about it. People are watching. We think, oh, nobody will know. I'm, I'm over in so-and-so. Nobody will know me. My dad taught me when I was a kid. This is a true story. My dad taught me as a kid. He said, son, I don't care where you go in this world. Somebody's going to know you. I didn't believe that until I got older. Man, I could be, I could be in New York somewhere and doing something, and I'll hear, and I'll hear somebody call my name. Like, oh, we're here on vacation. You think, you think you're getting by with stuff. People are watching all the time, right? And so here our walk, this is what Paul's saying, our walk, be mindful of how you walk. Be mindful of where you go. Be mindful of your time. Don't be foolish. But he says, understand, in verse 17, don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Be mindful that others see our walk. This is important, friends. Be mindful of others seeing our walk. Because that's a good reminder to help us keep those steps in check. Again, not about guilt, not about condemnation, but about, man, I'm representing God. I mean, when I walk out of my house in the morning, when I'm in my house, I'm representing God. And I need people to see that. Not, not for me, not for my glory, not for me lifting me up, but I want to show him to everybody that I can. That should be the representation that we carry with us every single day. So we have to ask ourselves, again, not in arrogance, but do they see him or do they see me? But even bigger than that, can they see him through me? That's what our walk ultimately has to show, friends. All of this is part of our growth. All of this is part of our growth. All of this is part of God's plan for our life. But as we've looked at for these last several weeks and these key points in these series that we've been going through, we wrap it up today by talking about how we, how we walk out our faith. How do, we, how do we do that? How do we walk out our faith before watchful eyes? It's reflection time. It really is. This is where we, we kind of turn, turn, turn to the mirror again. What does my walk show others? Who, who does my walk show that I follow? I mean, really, it, it's that clear and that simple. It is that concise. I'm either in or I'm not. You know, uh, uh, my friend Nikita, when he was here several weeks ago, he said that same thing. And, that, and that, that, that's it. You're either in or you're not. Does my walk reflect my love for Christ? Again, we go back to verse 15. Pay attention to how you walk, how you live, not as unsure, but as wise. That is such a powerful thing. And I encourage you to go back, write these verses down. Go back and read this for yourself. I mean, it is so powerful and so beautiful what Paul has given us in this letter because we know others are watching. So therefore, be mindful Walk as light, visible matters, time is a gift. Look around and see opportunities to let him shine. That's what that's the possibilities and the endless, endless possibilities that we have before us. Walk, Paul says, in love. Other versions and other, other scriptures say walk as worthy of him. Think about that. Think about worthy of the call of my life, worthy of the representation as I am imitating him. And may we walk through, I believe this with all my heart, as we follow him, as we get stronger, may one day we all look forward to walking through the gates of glory and hearing those in powerful, incredible words, well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen. As the praise team comes back up to share. The